we can use cryptocurrency and technologies to construct alternative structures outside of the state that allow people to satisfy their own needs. For instance, one of the main arguments people hear put to the Spanish state why they want to become independent from the Spanish state is the level of taxes that they have to pay. We can, we can give an answer to that demand using cryptocurrency. And there are also uh, other key regions that we're also uh, have an interest in. One of our the main uh, areas is the project of uh, Rojava in North Syria, where they are uh, constructing an economy uh, based off a system of cooperatives as an alternative to state-based system or uh, which is uh, enforced by a state-based system that manage the uh, market. Uh, another uh, Kerala in India is a, is a state in southern India, and they have a very big uh, free software, uh, free technology program, especially in developing medical technology. Uh, Latin America, is an uh, area of the world right now that have a lot of uh, potential uh, for, develop for development of alternative movements in Argentina, in uh, Mexico. Uh, the problem is that uh, this, this global system, we can understand it not just as on a national basis, on a global level, as a network, and Latin America is very much one of the uh, periphery continents uh, in, the, in the world. The, the, the reason why uh, Marxism is so popular in Latin America is the level of uh, financial and economic exploitation that people there face. And we can use uh, modern technologies as a form of empowerment to give Latin Americans uh, a way forward out of their crisis. And another really important region is Africa. And uh, also recently, I was handed a report or a proposal for a project in Russia where they want to uh, create a decentralized marketplace that isn't subject to uh, American censorship like uh, Alibaba, that they can have their entire production chain within their local region of, uh, of states, not just Russia, but also the Caucasian states together, is as a political tool. And these tools that we, can, that we develop uh, is not just in isolation, but together with the support, the, together we seek the support of uh, different social movements. For instance, here it would be the independentist movement or the Barcelona City Council to try to coordinate our work together. And what this means is that uh, we need a network of resistance that we develop a common technological basis organized around, uh, or organized around uh, common principles, we share the common principles, we develop uh, links with other technological organisations to coordinate our work together. So, about our projects, so uh, in the document it describes, it describes about each individual project, so for instance on the front it talks about telecommunications in terms of the community network. In page uh, three, it says about our short-term uh, short objectives, which in this stage is to set up community networks based off of the wifi.net model, which the model of wifi.net and Freifunk is somewhat, something that can be exported to other regions around the world to develop autonomous telecommunications infrastructure. But on page four, at the top of the page, 
It says establish mobile telephone ISP with 4G internet. So today, uh, 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 computer or technology devices are moving from computers and laptops to the mobile phone. And currently there is no uh, free technology answer for uh, telecommunications on the mobile, mobile phone, telecommunications infrastructure. So it's an absolute imperative for free technology movement to develop a solution for that. However, in the short term, uh, we, can, we can start with uh, basic uh, in internet infrastructure, telecommunications infrastructure. Second project is about free software. So uh, on page four, it talks about make Linux a dominant operating system. What this means is that uh, is that uh, part of what made Linux spread was not just that we were developing Linux, that we were uploading on the internet. But there was a community of people doing support. Every town and city had a Linux user group. There were places where you could go, you could learn about Linux. There was a very active community of people advocating free technology, spreading it to other people. And so we have to understand that our work is not just a technological work, but it's also a social work at the same time. At the same time, we need to be, we need to be uh, spreading the knowledge of technology, of uh, Linux, of the desktop, so that it becomes rooted in our communities around us, not just that we understand, that we know about it. And part of that is also uh, about developing school curriculums, uh, school textbooks, and, and so on. Also, uh, industrial development. So, uh, the first stage is a research project about free hardware, um, ecological industrial, and the long-term objective is ecological industrial technology. In uh, Rajava, they have now a developing industrial program, which is based off of the uh, principal concept of developing an industrial system that is harmonious, with the environment, with the human beings around it, with ecological development, because it's recognised that ecological development is something that is innate to human freedom, to human, to humanity having a satisfying uh, existence, and uh, in particular, our work inside of that work is to think: How do we apply our knowledge of technology to support that industrial program? And based off of a process of feedback, of, uh, of work, observation, analysis, and uh, modification to our work, we can, we can develop new concepts or new ideas about developing uh, industrial technology. Uh, and uh, one of the first pioneers of this was the project of open source ecology, which developed, which was driven by two key concepts, which was the concept of every, of having uh, all of the equipment based off of a modular design, and that each of those components, the second point being that each of those components could be, uh, it has, is based off of open source plans that anybody can develop. And so now, that project, has kind of stagnated. So now we have the opportunity at our organization to take that idea and concept forward and apply it in a uh, large region. Lastly, and this is our longer term objective, is about how we can replace bureaucracy with digital software. How we can use the technology, the cryptography, the peer-to-peer -peer technology to construct new forms of economic organization between human beings, uh, how we can create new smart contracts to construct a new form of legal system based off of uh, polymorphic law, a uh, form of uh, law which is consensus based, uh, which is not monopolistic, uh, about 
to try and understand where did the movement with the pirates, with the idea of digital democracy, where did it go wrong? The, maybe it's not just about constructing the one perfect platform to apply across every single use case, but maybe there are there is a lot of differences in a case-by-case -case basis that actually is more about the uh, giving people the tools that they can use to construct their own platform to satisfy their own needs on local levels according to the needs of each movement of each uh, region. So, uh, in terms of cryptocurrency, what is our main critique right now? There is a big uh, separation between theory and practice. There are, everybody is trying to develop the next new cool big technology. Everybody is releasing papers, people in uh, universities theorizing about new advanced cryptography techniques. However, this technology, very small amount of this technology is making its way into the hands of users, the hands of people. And the flip side of that, the wallets, the user-facing technology, one of it is very simplistic, lacking very basic features. So our, our job, our role, is to connect both of these sides of the technology movement together to, to be able to uh, to be able to create a harmonious state within the cycle of uh, technological development. And in terms of uh, cryptocurrency, we talked about using cryptocurrency to create economic uh, sovereignty for supporting uh, national movements around the world. Movements, um, and when we talk about national movements, not about having our own, people having their own state, but about people, uh, about marginalized uh, peoples being able to protect their integrity as a culture from uh, uh, liberal globalism. And, uh, and when we talk about applying cryptocurrency on a large scale level, what we need to think about is a unified financial infrastructure. Um, so far, our analysis, which, uh, which is also in the section about, uh, about cryptocurrency on page 16, is that uh, first, one of the most important basis for developing these uh, uh, new, uh, new series of technologies like the uh, decentralized web, decentralized markets. One of the key puzzle pieces that is missing is uh, a proper messaging subsystem that can be used to construct uh, all of these uh, new uh, technological concepts. But it's, um, it's not just something that has application for cryptocurrency, it has wide application for uh, digital governance and all of the other abstract systems that we were talking about earlier. Also, we need to give focus to anonymity in wallets, strong anonymity to protect users. Uh, the project of uh, Monero is very interesting. Uh, there still isn't a proper decentralized exchange, like a decentralized marketplace with anonymity working over Tor that allow people to economically organize in an autonomous way. Uh, so that was oh, okay, so the exchange at the top, so uh, decentralized exchanges are very important. Uh, and something that, so the wallets and the exchanges are something that go together. And then also we need to think about a payment system on a large scale level, whether that's paper currency, whether that's uh, mobile phones, mobile phone application, whether it's cheap, uh, 
four dollar devices which can transact Bitcoin with a merchant working over uh, LoRa uh, radio networks that can cover uh, 20 square kilometers uh, is, or whether we uh, establish WiMAX systems. We have to try and think about uh, when we apply Bitcoin, how could, how could we uh, how could we uh, apply this technology on a local level that can serve all of the needs of the population? Because talk about replacing current currency with cryptocurrency, but not not satisfying the needs of everybody in the local community uh, is not really a replacement or a solution. So uh, also accumulate. Uh, capital that we use to invest in projects, in groups, developing projects, and through our work demonstrate our capability and provide a space for projects that we shepherd, kind of like a, a, a startup accelerator, but a politicized one, which is not driven by profit but driven by social change. And through this, uh, advance the technology movement forward. So, to do that, okay, so yeah, to do that, we first, um, so yeah, we gather our numbers. So, uh, about our needs now. So, uh, we need to find lawyers, we need to find local organisations that can give us support. They can give us protection, uh, for instance, for things like issuing visas, many, many different things. There's, there's a lot of different uh, complexities that we're not equipped to deal with. The second thing is uh, uh, now we are, now we are uh, searching for a place. Um, if there are other organisations that want to join with us to uh, per that we can divide the cost of the rent for a place. We can establish a, a cryptocurrency center, a cryptocurrency and free technology institute in Barcelona. So, for instance, there's this place. The uh, there's one place that we're looking at. Just we looked at it today, but there's probably other far more better places that locals here can find uh, because we're foreigners. For 2,000 euros a month, we have another guy, another organisation also wants to uh, uh, split the cost with us. If there's uh, three people involved, then we can all pay 600 euros each a month, which is really a small amount. If we get support from uh, established institutions, that will enable us to gain uh, more support. Um, what we can do is we can establish a, a coordinating committee about the space, about the projects. Uh, about the projects, the committee is not uh, it's not enforced; it's consensual, but it's a way of coordinating the activity uh, between the groups. So There's some form of coherency, and uh, also we can talk about uh, taking people from the different organizations uh, into our organization every so often to give them periodic training. This is like on a weekend, we give them training over two days. So, what are the benefits? So the first is that uh, we can make uh, Barcelona into a global center for technological development, for cryptocurrency, uh, an important place in Europe. Through our work, we can bring increased investment and support for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency projects to Catalonia. For instance, uh, uh, I can bring uh, a lot of people and different projects here. People like uh, Cody Wilson, Vitaly Buterin, Peter Todd, people from uh, other autonomous movements uh, like uh, Rojava, Latin America, Kerala, people from WikiLeaks, a lot of media attention, the 
uh, that we can use to uh, support uh, local uh, developing a local ecosystem here. And uh, also, we will establish a Bitcoin conference. We're going to make an event here. So, also, we can establish links with, between this region and other regions to build up a network, not just between technology projects, but between other socio political movements and projects. And, what we can, and finally, we can, we can really pioneer a historical precedent for the use of technology and its relevance, we can spread cryptocurrency and Bitcoin within Barcelona itself. So, uh, so I know there's a, a lot of uh, rich entrepreneurs here, maybe not so rich as London, but let's put our energy, our efforts together to establish something, to make a cryptocurrency and technology institute here in Barcelona, <laughs> the Bitcoin, the price, of, we just had the Bitcoin price crash. Why did it crash? Because there's no real value or use to Bitcoin. Everybody that's buying Bitcoin is buying it because next week they hope the price will go up. The, the, the drive upwards in price is hollow. There's no value or real use behind that. If we don't do something to remedy that, then cryptocurrency will just be a paper tiger. It will be irrelevant. It will have no relevance to people's life. And for our work, we can make a uh, world-first uh, major landmark in technology. We can train people. We can send them to work on projects. Uh, I have a lot of people now that want to join me. I get a lot of emails. but. Uh, we just, we're just in the phase now of creating the organization, finding the space. Uh, afterwards, we will uh, make a lot of propaganda as well. And also, uh, my, uh, something that I feel is really important is the next generation of young hackers, uh, people who maybe facing a life of corporate work, going to university, to take those idealistic young people, to give them the opportunity to be able to develop their, their vision and their capability, and to put them into something that's really useful, and really fulfilling as a work. So I'm gonna, I wanna finish with the story of Ada Lovelace, the computer was first developed in the 50s during uh, World War II to, to crack uh, German war codes and to calculate the trajectories for uh, armaments. But the computer itself was actually proposed in the early 1800s by Charles Babbage. Um, at the time, Charles Babbage he proposed the computer as a mechanical calculating device to make industry more efficient, to solve mathematical sums. And there was a woman called Ada Lovelace. Her father was uh, Lord Byron Lovelace, the poet. He had gone to fight in the Greek War of Independence against Ottomans, and he had died. And her mother was furious, and she forbid her daughter from studying poetry and so pushed her into studying mathematics and science. And Ada was a visionary. They called her the Countess of Numbers. She was really interested in not just mathematics in its own right, but in metaphysical questions, in social questions. And she really, when she saw Babbage's computer, she became obsessed with it. She really grasped something about it. And at the time, nobody else saw the potential of Babbage's computer. Only Ada Lovelace saw it, and she wrote, she wrote scientific papers in which she said that the value or the potential of this computer was not just as a mechanical calculating device to improve the efficiency of industry, but it has enormous social benefit, enormous social uses, and that this computer should be in the homes of every single person. She said that it could be used to construct beautiful works of art, musical compositions, but 
Um, and she also, she was also the world's first programmer. She developed the world's first computer program. But her vision uh, was ignored by a lot of people. They thought that she was a bit crazy. They didn't really understand what she was saying. And the computer didn't get developed. And it would take 150 years later, in the 70s, in the 80s, for Ada Lovelace's vision to actually materialize. But it, it is something that could have happened in the Victorian ages if people had had a bit more vision. So thank you.